Now the Salt Lake County District Attorney is explaining why he's not charging any of those six officers with a crime. Fox 13 News investigative reporter Adam Herbitz has that part of the story from downtown Salt Lake. Well, the district attorney says there needs to be some sort of process put into place to prevent these types of cases from being screened three, three and a half years later. The chief already said he's made those changes, but he won't tell you or me what those changes are. We've had like tons of people hit and killed on the streets because people don't wait for the lights. I'm sorry, I thought, I thought I did something like wrong. It normally does not take six officers to handle a jaywalker, but it does when they run. Stop! Three and a half years later, now all six of these officers are facing an investigation from their own department, but they will not be charged criminally. You're entitled to use a uh, reasonable force. District Attorney Sim Gill said by the time Salt Lake City became aware of its own case, the statute of limitations for a misdemeanor charge had passed, so he couldn't make a decision one way or the other. Either way, he says none of the officers committed a felony. We are going to be scrutinized, and rightfully so. These kind of encounters happen uh, thousands of times. More than a dozen current and former officers all say, after watching the body camera video, they agree. A person who is under arrest should put their arms out. Those arrests and use of force in that nature happen all the time. Matt Evans is a former internal affairs sergeant. He says Chief Mike Brown shouldn't have ever placed the officers on leave. But even if he did, it should not have been three and a half years later. He's reactionary. He's going to go overboard, right, to show he's doing something. Several sources with close ties to the case say this captain, John Beaner, stuck up for the officers in a meeting with the chief. Then he was placed under investigation for the second time this year. It just demoralizes the officers. And other officers would be like, that could happen to me. What procedures do you have in place proactively? I think we have an obligation to explain, be truthful, be open about the decisions that we make. Did you communicate that to the chief when you spoke to him? I've communicated that to every chief for the last 12 years, 14 years. Despite promising change has already been made, the chief declined all interviews and admitted there hasn't been any written changes to policy. On Wednesday night, he sent this email to his officers, upset with anyone working with Fox 13 to release public information. Our department did not release nor confirm the identities of our employees. I'm very disappointed this information was released and used. How dare the news report the news, you know? <laughs> this just shows that time and time again, he tries to make something else the scapegoat. He's never consistent. He does what he wants to do in the moment. Officers say the chief has lost the trust of his own department. According to a canine officer who didn't want to give their name due to fear of retaliation, he publicly called us out and did exactly what he's accusing Fox 13 of. He has no integrity and he makes us sick. They call him the hand ringer for a reason. He always, you know, just worries and doesn't like to make decisions or, you know, pass it off onto somebody else. If you'd like to see the full letter of Chief Mike Brown talking about how he's disappointed with his officers for speaking with the media, we'll have the whole thing on our website, fox13now.com. For now, reporting downtown, Adam Herfetz. Fox 13 News, Utah.